777 and in today's video I'm talking about SQL injection what it is and I actually showing you guys a quick demo of SQL injection uh, locally on a private private site etc so uh, basically to start, start off though I'll be explaining what SQL injection is and then we'll move on to um, actually doing it so for those of you who don't know what SQL injection is you have to know what SQL is first SQL is a query language so it's kind of like a language used with databases. So uh, Microsoft has their own database um, that we will be using today, very popular. And so before I get into the SQL injection, we'll kind of go over what a database is, etc. So this is a uh, this is Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. It's a program that allows you to, to interact with databases. Large companies use databases all the time for holding things like you know, your your account information, all kinds of stuff like that, because it's very useful and you can hold a lot of information uh, really easily and get to it very easily. So we're using a database called CHDB. It's simply a fake nursing or no, sorry, a fake hospital database. So if you go through, you can see like there's different things like admissions. So if I show the only the top 200 rows, you need, this is fake entries. For admissions for different people and different uh, their 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 physician ID, what floor they're on, bed, etc. And you can see all kinds of different things, even things like uh, you know if we go to patients, here's a, here's the top 200 patients. You know what's wrong with them, where they're from, etc., etc., etc. So this is an example uh, like small database, and we're using a website today that will interact with with this database and. Uh, I'll show you guys how it works, and then we're going to do some SQL injection on it. So what SQL injection is, is when you try and basically attack a database um, using like what the program gives you. So for example, I'll show you guys. So here I have this website, an ASP. So this is a website that interacts with that database. So this is something that you see online. So for example, if I type in like 5 here and hit get patient, it will actually go to the database, find out who patient number five is, and then get their gender, birth date, and their address. Same thing if I just have 100 and get patient. You'll see now it doesn't work. Or sorry, it works, it grabs the information, etc., etc. So this is how a program, like you, you, you use programs every single day in our databases, and that is how it works. It will, you enter an ID, you hit the you press get patient and it goes through the SQL server, it generates an SQL command and it gets the information that you desire. Alright, so now I'm going to take this hundred and turn it into like an SQL injection like. So an SQL injection is writing an SQL statement in this text box. And if the pro if the website's coded improperly, which was this one is, it will actually run the SQL statement that's been put into the text box. So I'll show you guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the statement that it wants me to complete, which is a valid patient ID, which is 100. I'll then do a semicolon, which in like every single language kind of completes a sentence. And then what I'll do is I'll type in an SQL statement. So for example, if I go over here, you'll see this is the database that we're working with. You'll see there's a, there's a table called provinces. Now if I, if I look at it, you can see it simply has every single province in short form and then next to it it's long form. This is Canada. So what I can do is I can go delete provinces where province ID equals and then I'll do like PE. So what's going to happen now is it's going to go to the provinces table, find something that equals PE, so this one right here, and delete it. So when I go ahead and click get, you'll see nothing happened, no, no, no error happened. It did reload, and it did reload the same information again. But if I reload the provinces table, you'll see that PE no longer exists. And that's because it's been deleted from that statement. 
So that is an example of an SQL, of an SQL injection where I have written an SQL statement in a text box on a website and it has directly affected the database. Now this can be bad. Imagine things like um, deleting you know, an account, you know, deleting someone else's account, but even worse than that, getting information. So you can write things like you know, a select statements that will actually return information and then you can get information like passwords, you know, email, you know, email credentials, you know, credit card information, all that kind of stuff, assuming it's not encrypted in the database. So that is a quick demo of what SQL injection is. Now it's pretty easy to stop SQL injection. And what you can do that is call something called stored procedures. So a stored procedure is essentially having the SQL commands uh, pre-built into it and not concatenating. So what happens is when we do this hundred here, what happens is it takes the SQL statement that it has and adds a hundred to it at the end, and then it runs that string. A stored, our stored procedure uses a built-in function and doesn't actually add uh, the value on, and because of that, it won't just run what's in the text box, it adds it through a variable instead. And I'll show you guys in a second what it does. So what I'll do now is I'll do, I'll, I'll check out this text box, run stored procedure, and I'll change this site to now try and delete uh, on. We'll hit get patient again. And now we're going to see it's failed to convert parameter from a string to an int. So this is an error. So it actually didn't work. Using the stored procedure, it didn't actually guide the information. And this is, this is good. Because what happened was it had a value that it knew had to be a number because the patient ID is always a number. So it, it was looking for a number and it tried to convert this whole thing into one variable that's a number. It didn't work successfully. So if we, if we reload the provinces, you'll see that Ontario ON is still there. So basically we have saved our database by using stored procedures, which is a very widely known thing to help prevent against SQL injection. So that is basically what SQL injection is. Basically it's running a uh, queries inside a text box, uh, you know, after you give it valid information. All right. So now I'm going to show you guys exactly, uh, how it works. So not only, uh, that I show you guys, you know, what SQL injection is, but a little more in depth on the code side of things. So this is the code that deals with the database and gets information. Now I'm not going to go through it too much, inf you know, too much here, but I will go through and show you guys, you know, exactly what's going on. So at the top here, this is what's going to happen when the button's clicked. Here we have the connection string. So what happens here is this is the part where it goes through and this is the SQL statement. So it's selecting whatever from patients where patient ID equals the patient uh, dot text. And this is the text box. So for example, if we do we did earlier where we have a hundred comma or colon delete provinces, etc., that will get added onto this SQL, this SQL uh, command line script and it will be run. Now you'll notice on the pro on the website though, that there's this button that I clicked and it's used stored procedures and that actually saved the database. So this is the difference. When we do it through the traditional way with SQL injection protection, we're just taking what's in the text box and adding it to a generic string, which happens to be an SQL statement. But this is what happens if the checkbox is checked. Instead, the command text is get patient. It uses a stored procedure, and then it uses an at patient ID. And it says it has to be an integer value. And then it says, okay, and it has, to, and it's coming from here. So now it does, is it takes the text uh, box, converts it to an integer, if, it's, if it can, and adds it to the at patient ID variable. And the stored procedure that we use is an SQL file that's already available or on, on, that it's already in the website. So because of that, it's not being made on the fly, it's already available and the value for the text box gets put into this patient ID right here, assuming that it's valid. 
and because it has to be an integer and it's assigned to this variable like thing, it prevents against SQL injection. So that is a basic rundown of SQL injection and a basic rundown of how it's prevented in this case. There are plenty of other things when it comes to SQL injection, uh, but that is a very small uh, introduction to it. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you like videos like this, uh, let me know and I can try and make some more like this. But otherwise, guys, though, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in future videos. This is the Hacker 0 7 and I'm signing off.